With the U.S. midterm elections now in the history books, what are the implications for Canada? The Democrats now control the U.S. House of Representatives, which may make it harder for President Trump to enact some of his policies. But what about trade? The new NAFTA agreement, the so-called USMCA, there's also the tariffs Trump placed on Canadian aluminum and steel. Seems that's all very much still uh, highlighted with a question mark. To chat more about this, we're joined by Danielle Smith from 770 CHQR. Danielle, what's your first take on how this would shake out over the next two years when things are going to get tougher for President Trump? I'm going to speak with Eric Miller this morning to find out how concerned Canadians should be because I think everybody's been focused on how protectionist Trump is and ignoring how protectionist the Democrats have historically been. I was speaking to a couple of people at a U.S. consul event last night. They were saying that in some states, the Democrats are even more protectionist. And so there is a danger, especially since you combine these factors of wanting to protect their own markets from an influx of Canadian goods and the fact that they hate Donald Trump and don't want to endorse any part of his agenda. Meanwhile, you've got the USMCA coming up for an affirmation vote in the House of Representatives sometime in the early part of the new year. So there's a couple things that could happen. They could decide they've got bigger fish to fry, like going after Donald Trump, Trump's tax returns, which seems to be the priority right now, and just allow it to sail through. Similar to there was a change of government in Mexico and the incoming government said, we're not going to mess with the deal that you've affirmed. So they could do that. If they do reject it, it means that the NAFTA agreement will prevail, which, you know, and I on the surface is actually better for Canada since it was seen to be a better agreement than what we ultimately ended up being forced to agree to. But then that could prompt a counter reaction from Trump, who says, fine, if you're not going to play ball with me, I'm just going to pull out of the deal hmm. altogether and, uh, and with a six month notice. So that's something that we won't know until we see how those pieces fall into place over the course of the next few months. But I'm going to try to bring some an analyst on to understand how uh, that will change and whether or not we can expect to see any kind of resolution on the steel and aluminum tariffs too. Okay. Hey, uh, can I put you on the spot here for a minute, Danielle? I just wanted, there's so many firsts, so many women that won seats in Congress uh, in yesterday's election and coming from a background of politics. What would you, does this expand to more Western democracies to maybe have an influence at supporting women who have struggled and faced so many barriers in politics? You know what struck me is how far ahead we are in Canada in having women have senior roles, and not only as premiers, but also as cabinet members. I was kind of shocked at how surprised they were at how many women got elected. I think it was 83 out of a total of 450 some seats. I think our record is a much better than that in provincial legislatures and in the federal legislatures. So we often talk about how American politics influences Canadian politics. Maybe we're having a little bit of influence on them too, <laughs> Especially as you start seeing some of those referendums on legalization of medical marijuana, recreational uh, marijuana, they had a few more of those referendums go to the positive last night as well. So I think that uh, the, the, the relationship, uh, you know, we push and pull each other uh, from time to time. But I think on, on s some of those issues, Canada's leading the way. That's a great point. Quiet leadership on the world stage seems to be our role most times, doesn't it? Sure does. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. You can listen to Danielle on 770 CHQR weekday mornings from 930 to 1230.